Today we have a short painting tutorial video on these two sets. To your left we have Printable Scenery's Ancient Ruins. And this is a really nice set that can be either fantasy or sci-fi. Uh, I didn't print out two of the pieces, but it comes with a good variety of different kinds of ruins that you can um, put throughout your table. And I think it provides some nice scatter terrain. Super easy to paint. And so I think this is a great set. And it is only $12.95. Here to your right, we have Corvus Games Terrain, Under Hive Container Hab Buildings. This is a pretty cheap set at $4.41, at least in US dollars. And you come up with multiple different kinds of buildings. And I really like this set a lot. Obviously this is sci-fi. These are fairly quick to paint as well. One of the things that I really like about this set is that you can take these roofs off and see what's inside and move your miniatures through the building. This really is a affordable STL file set and can put throughout your gaming train as well. I was able to play a four player Star Breach battle last night and at the end of the video I just panned through the scene so that you can see both of these sets in action so make sure you stay tuned to the very end to be able to see that otherwise let's go ahead and dive into the painting tutorial so go ahead and grab any dark gray i have zinc craft paint and i spray paint this chalky finish anvil gray as my base on all of these ancient ruins and then i'm gonna go ahead and just dry brush this zinc on top of this darker gray and pretty much always remember with 3D prints that you do want to go with the grain instead of going against it. And so make sure you cover in a lot of the cracks and crevices. Next, grab a lighter gray. And here I have slate gray. And we're going to do another coat on top of the darker one just to lighten it up a little bit. So you don't want to put as much on as the first coat and just go over it like this. Next, grab some dark brown and I have burnt umber. And you actually want to water down your brush pretty well because you're not dry brushing. The brown needs to get into the cracks and so it's fairly watery here and I'm pushing in the paint into the cracks as well. And so pretty much put the brown anywhere where you want a different rock color other than the gray and blend it in on some of the parts like this. You don't want a harsh line between the gray and the brown. So just fill it in wherever you want it to be a different color. Pick a medium brown and I have milk chocolate from Americana. And we are going to just go over the dark brown with this by dry brushing this intermediary color. And so I actually have to do two coats of this because as you can see, it is pretty dark uh, to go up against that brown. So wait until it dries and do a second coat if you want it to be lighter. That's optional, obviously. If you want the darker brown, that's fine. But we're going to go with a lighter highlight color after this. We're doing our final highlight color. And here I have toffee, but any kind of light beige will work. And you're really only putting a little bit on. As you can see here, I'm very lightly dry brushing to just draw out some of the highlights. You definitely don't want to put too much of this final coat on. Uh, you're just making the edges stand out just a little bit. So it's easiest to do all your pieces in assembly line fashion and doing all of the gray and all of the brown and so on and so forth. And it turns out like this. Uh, I think the transition between the brown and the gray looks really good. We're moving on here to the Corvus Terrain Hab Units. And what I did here was I spray painted all of them with this camouflage army green. And then went after that with some primer red and sprayed the bottom portion. This is not with an airbrush, it's just with rattle can. So I'm just controlling the spray a little bit so that the red is only hitting the bottom portion of these HAB units. And you can get a pretty nice effect that way without an airbrush. And here I am uh, highlighting all of the pipes and various areas with this silver craft paint. And you can use any kind of silver that you want and find out uh, all the spots that you sort of want to just have be a silver color. 
For my accent color, I'm grabbing antique gold, but you can pick any accent color that you want, whether that's white or light blue, anything that goes well with green. I always think that yellow goes well with green, and so I am using this color just to paint around the windows and the door frames, just to give it a little bit of accent to it. The reason why I don't do pure yellow is because yellow typically does not cover very well. And so I found sort of these more goldish yellows to have better coverage than actual yellow colors. Now before we move on to the weathering phase, I want you to take a look here and see whether or not you want to weather these HAB units like this piece here, or if you wanna just keep it clean like these other pieces that I haven't weathered yet. I think those clean pieces actually look fine. And so if you wanna save some time and not go through the weathering process, you can stop at this place here, or you can just use some known oil and darken up a little bit the silver parts that you have painted. But this is entirely up to you in terms of the look that you're after, so you can decide whether or not to move on to these next weathering steps. I'm grabbing my Nuln Oil Wash and am basically gonna go over all of the silver and will um, not be super careful about where I put it because again, weathering, you're trying to dirty up the piece anyway. So I'm not super careful about the lines. And then after I'm done with the silver, I go ahead and just brush on a little bit of the wash in various places throughout the entire thing and I sort of streak it down, uh, pulling it downwards. Now, um, because I did go ahead and weather all of my HAB units, I stopped using my uh, Nuln oil pot and I made my own. And if you wanna know how to make your own wash, Goober Town has a really good video which I followed where I use those inks that you see on the table right there as well as using some Liquitex um, medium. And so go ahead and check out his video because I was using a lot of it and I didn't wanna use the expensive GW brand. So I go ahead and I weather up all of the pieces like this, just sort of dragging it up and down, making some spots darker than others. I'm showing burnt sienna here, but I actually think the burnt umber, the darker brown works better, and that's what I use for my other habs. So go ahead and grab a sponge, and I just lightly dab on this brown, basically along the corners or edges that are raised, typically the spots that will get rusted out and um, I'll just hit some random spots. Now, I'm not the best at weathering, and so there's other tutorial videos out there on how to do some really awesome weathering, but for me, uh, getting these done really quickly, I think the sponge method actually works the best. I am gonna try to use the hairspray and salt method on my sci-fi train, but for now, with these HAB units, I'm just sponging because it's just a lot quicker. After this step, I did go back and sponge again some Georgia clay, which is a lighter brown with orange in it, and just went over some of the spots with that lighter color. So there you have it. As you can see, it is really, really easy to paint these sets up. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked, please like the video and subscribe. Check out the Patreon page this month of March 2020, we're gonna be giving away four pieces from this set, so every month for my patrons, we do a monthly drawing. Happy gaming, and we'll see you next time.